Here is a quick tutorial on how I use graphic images that come in the bundles uh, usually that I buy from Hungry JPEG. First of all, I download them <clears throat> and then I put them all into uh, my library. I'm going to show you the library for these images. <clears throat> I established a file folder under my user designs called graphic objects. And as you can see, literally, <clears throat> I have hundreds of them. And they are particularly good. Some I need to clean out like these. I've double loaded them on here. And every now and then I play with this and clean it up a little bit. But I have so many. These black, crisp, high quality uh, images are easy to trace and give uh, tremendously good results. And I use them for several different things. Today, <clears throat> I have clicked on uh, flower heads. I'm going to work on those. For example, I click on this, and that's a flower head. And usually, I cut and paste it. I have, uh, I have another project where, rather than working on each individually, I just put them all on this, this one page. So, um, so I go to the library, and I get this image, and I cut it or copy it and paste it on a page where I plan to do work with several of them. Um, so back to the library. <clears throat> uh, one thing I need to warn you about, because this has probably happened to you before. So let me go back to uh, the design. If I have this selected in a box and I go to my library and I choose a different one, say I choose um, this one, and I double click it, this image is on, it also goes into whatever I have selected on a previous project. So now I have it on this one and I have it on this one. Um, so you want to make sure that nothing in your previous projects have been selected when you choose another item from your library. So I'll go back, control Z, control Z, control Z, and let's see what that does. Nope, hasn't done it yet. There it is. So that was my old one. So if I unselect it, my new one is, is over here. So what I would do is uh, now select it and cut it or copy it and go back to my original design and, and place it on here with a paste. You can see I've already done that. So I'll delete this one. So anyway, going back to the library, I just want to show you <clears throat> all these wonderful graphic images and all the things you can do with them. And some work um, for uh, some projects and others work for other projects. But generally, I do something called cut, print, and sketch. I am crazy about sketching with my pen for reasons I have outlined in a previous video. So I've got all of these images. Now these are not cut files. What you're looking here is not a cut file. These are just image files that I've uh, purchased for the most part from Hungry JPEG. Slid those into the library into a file called graphic objects. Uh, I generally do not put my cut files in the library. I use the library mostly for quick reference for the purpose that you can see right now. So getting back to my designs. So here I have one, two, three, four different flower heads and I'm going to work them um, so that you can see what I'm do going to do. Obviously, okay, if you ever need to know whether something is a cut file or not, sometimes you cannot tell, um, you hit the send button. Now I'm in uh, version four of Silhouette Studio and I've come to really appreciate all the things that it can do. So I go to send and if I hit cut for this file, you see what cuts is a square around. So I know this is not a cut file. Um, so I'm going to go back to the design window. I know this is just an image file from my library. So what I would do at this point is go to the trace, select trace, select trace window 
go around this image. Whoops, I didn't get it completely enough so I can go down. Whoops. I think that'll do it. <clears throat> Generally, I, I like to come real close, but that looks pretty good, so I'm going to hit trace. I have found that in version 4, I don't have to do as much fiddling, particularly if the image is a good one to begin with. So I'm going to hit trace. I'm going to back out of that and move the image, which is what this is. And now I have a cut file. So generally, I do a couple of things if I'm just playing around. This is a really a good, um, if, you, if your laptop is handy, when you're sitting doing nothing, which is probably not very often, but when you do want some time, you can do this in front of the television set if you want, if you have a laptop. Anyway, what I generally do is copy and paste and paste. I make three copies. And actually, to fit them all on this sheet, I'm going to select them all and reduce them. And then they'll fit side by side. So what I like to call these as, um, this is my cut file. This is going to be, say, my print file. And then this is going to be my sketch file. And I put it all on one page. This one I don't have to do much with. This one here, in order for me to identify it as a print file, I either have to add color. That way I know, know that it's a print file. Or add a pattern. And I, I really love using my watercolor for this. And so if I wanted to print this, that's how it would look printed. And this last one, as you know in a previous video, thanks to Kay Hall, I found out how easy it is to turn this into a sketch. And you go down here to the emboss panel you wouldn't think that would be the one you'd use, but trust me, it really works. It's called the Emboss pal Panel. It says it requires Silhouette Cameo, I mean Curio, but it doesn't. And you've seen me do this before. I like the concentric circle. And in this case, I have found that um, changing the 0.100 to 0 0.004 and then hitting my Enter key enables that to be filled. And when I say filled, this is how it would sketch. Let's see if I could get real close and you can actually see. Yes. See, see these lines? If I put a pen in the holder, it would sketch each of the lines that you see. And of course, as I back away from it, you really can't, can't see it. <clears throat> what I generally like to do at this point, oh, oh, I must I must tell you one important thing. If I took this now and sent it to send, you'd see it's not a cut file, even though it looks like it's red, but it is not a cut file. And I can't make it a cut file until I release emboss. This little this little button right here is essential if you want all those lines that appeared in that very close-up image to be uh, instructions to your ballpoint pen or colored marker or whatever it is you're using. So you must release it. And if I take it now and hit send, you can see it's now a cut file. But in this case, of course, it's a sketch fill file for me. This is my cut file. This is something I might use to print. Um, I could change the color of the outline and it would print. Uh, but this one here is strictly a sketch fill cut file for which I would use a pen. Now, in order to keep this getting confusing, I like to go to my line color and my change the color to black. And as I said before, <clears throat> that's how come I have a cut file print file and a sketch file and I'll show you again how how that works that's it see it's all turned to black and that pen is going to be very busy uh, drawing all of these concentric circle 
designs to actually fill in. <clears throat> if you had an, uh, a file that looked like, well, let's see, um, not this one, but this one here, and you um, wanted to just color it in by hand, you would pretty much do what this does automatically. You would just go over inside of these lines over and over uh, over again <clears throat> to color it. So if you were going to do this manually, um, that's the process that, that you would use. Instead, this version 4 makes it so simple with this um, embossing embossed panel window as I showed you before. You can use any of these fill lines but I have found the concentric circle uh, is the most natural one. It's like replicating what you would do with a pen to fill in those lines. I hope that's uh, clear for you. So what I do, I'll back up now again. I've shown you how I've done it to one image and um, now I'm going to work on this one. Again, I know that this is a, an image and not a cut file. So I will go back over here to select my trace window, trace it. And like I said, these are so good, I don't have to usually move the threshold. It's really nice and clean and clear. So I just hit the trace button. That saves a lot of time. And back up again. Now I, I can remove the image file. This is now my cut file. I'll select it, copy, paste, paste. Same thing I did with the other ones. This one here and this one here. And what I'm going to do is like I did before is select all three and reduce them in size so they can fit on this page more easily. Okay, this one here is gonna have a little bit more color to it. Um, if I pick a color, you can see that tells me I could print that one if I want to change the color or the pattern. So, but this one here, going back to the emboss panel, picking the concentric circle, changing the value in here to 0.004. You can try different numbers, but that's the one that works for me. And then hitting my um, enter key, which I've just done on my keyboard. So as I said before, a little close up so you can see the difference. Yes, that's what's happening. And then I go to my line and to differentiate this, I always turn that into black. And guess what I didn't do again? I'm going to go back to my emboss panel because I forgot to release the emboss. And the good news is if you've done a lot of work and all of a sudden you don't see it as a cut file when you hit send, that's the reason why. And you can go back to this emboss window after you've selected this item and hit release emboss. And when I send that to the um, cutter, these I would cut using a pen. I wouldn't use the blade. I would use a pen. These are my sketch files. These are my print files and this is my cut file. So I generally do this and it's a good exercise um, if you're not doing anything and that way you have a whole page. What I then do is um, I will hit save as and I save this to my hard drive. Actually I have a 200 gigabyte SD card that I save it to. That's right here. It's a consolidated. And I will change the title to say, um, and I, I call cut, print, sketch. That way I know what kind of a file it is. Flower heads one. I add one in case I decide that there's another variation I want to do. And before I hit OK, I copy that title so it's exact and then I hit OK and it generates the cut job and it goes off to my SD card which I'll show you in a moment but then immediately I hit my window key this is a PC and I hit the snipping tool 
and I say new. You can see I've just done this to a bunch of foliage files. I have a cut file, a print file, and a sketch file. But in this case, we'll start all over again, and it says new, and because the screen is fogged out, I know I can go ahead and do that, so I can just go like that, and then hit my save key, and then where capture is, I hit control V, which is the paste shortcut, and it puts the exact same title as the studio file, so that they will be side by side, and I hit save so that uh, none of these will go back into my library. I really only use the library for these image files. And it's just the way I like to work. You may find you want to do something different. But when I go to my consolidated, I call it consolidated silhouette, and whoops, I'm in the, oh, there we are. This is the this is my silhouette file, and this is the the uh, cop, the photo I made using the clipping tool that shows me exactly what's in this file. I find this is the easiest way for me. Plus, I save these in several different places. I have a Dropbox account, and I save all my files in there. I save it. Uh, I also have another backup drive on my computer and I save them there. So I have at least three locations where if something happened, I could uh, always find my files. This is the image of what's in this Silhouette Studio file. This is the image that's what's in this file. And this is the image, what's in this and so forth and so on. And so basically I have, uh, I have done all of these so I can easily find um, what I'm working on. So I hope that's been useful to you. Um, I, this is a print and cut, and I just wanted to um, show lately how I have been turning lots of my files into print version, cut version, and a sketch version. As you can see this one here, I've done several. I have I've made a stem and a flower head and I can put them together. Here's a welded together so I can use that version and I could actually sketch the lower version in a green pen and then sketch the upper version in a, um, a colored pen or actually print just the flower heads various things I could do and this shows me that I put a pattern for printing in case I wanted to do that. But you can see I am doing a cut version, a print version, and a, a sketch version on almost all of the things that I'm doing. So um, I hope this helps you. I really am enjoying all of the features that are in the new version 4, particularly this concentric circling instant fill, which has been the easiest way to uh, sketch text or images, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So there we go. Uh, hopefully you'll find some usefulness in this, and um, this should do it. Bye for now.